So today I have the pleasure to discuss with Peter, who is the founder of GDGT. Not yeah. easy to <laughs> to pronounce or, as a French. Or you can just call you can just call it gadget also if that's easier. Okay, cool. So thanks for speaking with us uh, today, Peter. Oh, thanks. It's it's good to talk to you. Uh, so before we start our discussion, could you in uh, in a few words uh, present your project, your your company, and how you had the the idea to to launch uh, this company? Yeah, so um, you know, my background is um, I, I was uh, at one point a technology journalist uh, for a few for many years, and 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 um, wrote for. I was an editor at Red Herring, and and wrote about technology for the New York Times and Fortune and uh, the Guardian newspaper in the UK. I used to write a column for them, and uh, eventually got into blogging and uh, started a, a handful of, uh, of fairly well known technology blogs like Gizmodo and and Gadget. Uh, joystick, Hackaday, a few others, and um, you know, after uh, doing that for a long time, I blog. I was an active blogger from. I started in two thousand one, and so uh, it, did, it was kind of early in, and, uh, and you know, probably written you know ten or fifteen thousand blog posts in my life. Um, you know, kind of wanted to do something that was uh, kind of leaned into where I thought the next phase of the web was going, and. Um, you know, in Gadget, Gizmodo, whatever, um, you know, as sort of revolutionary as blogs are, they're still top-down, editorially driven, you know, products that have a lot more in common with, you know, the New York Times uh, than they might have with Twitter. Uh, and so, uh, you know, one of the things that I, that I wanted to do was like to see if we could build sort of a, a social experience around gadgets and consumer electronics. And um, I wasn't sure exactly what form that was going to take, but there were a lot of things that I wanted to do with Engadget that I wasn't ever able to do um, just because, you know, it was really a, a, when I sold it to AOL, I mean, they and AOL's business model was premium content and advertising and editorial models and stuff like that and, and less about uh, they didn't necessarily want to like experiment a lot with, with, uh, with Engadget. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I, I could hardly blame them for that. And, um, you know, the site, uh, so Gadget kind of was formed out of the genesis. Gen the genesis was sort of two ideas. Um, one that I had, which was I really wanted to create a site where people could go and list um, the gadgets that they have or gadgets that they had. And sort of this whole notion of like being able to kind of create your gadget graph alongside your social graph. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ryan Block, um, who uh, was editor-in-chief of Gadget uh, after I sort of moved up the ladder one step to editorial director, um, he had always wanted to do sort of like a Wikipedia for gadgets, like a, like a user-created gadget database. And um, again, like things that we weren't able to do at, at AOL, um, but made a lot of sense to sort of combine into one site. And so we left uh, Engadget in 2008 and um, decided that we wanted to, and we weren't even sure exactly what we were going to do, except that we were going to have these two components to it. One is the database, and then the other was um, the list of stuff that you have. And, um, and the whole idea was to create kind of like a whole platform and, and, and that you could build stuff on top of that. And so we did user reviews, we did Q&A, mm -hmm. um, and, and a few other things. And um, as the site's evolved over the past, I think we launched, we launched in July of 2009. So the site is about um, 16 months old now, 16 and a half months old. And uh, it, it's really the stuff that's really emerged and sort of risen to the top is like Q&A as, as the one – uh, and reviews, but Q and A is really the one thing that uh, that people have really kind of latched onto because what we have is a site where you have people coming and, and saying, "I own an iPad, I own you mm -hmm. know an Xbox, or I, you know whatever," and you can actually go and, and interact with people, um, you know, around these products. It's really about the product as a social object, the gadget as a social object, and the social object. I mean, the social interaction or engagement that you have around that is you know uh, the ability to have a discussion or write a review or ask a question. And we kind of find that when it comes to getting a great answer about something, whether it's what to buy or you're having a problem or you're looking for a great app or even a case, there's no better way to do that than to like ask people who actually own the products. Right. And by structuring the whole experience around products in the way that we've done, um, you have a way to do that. I mean, you can go and ask you know, your Twitter followers um, or your Facebook friends. Um, but for us, it's like a way to kind of connect people directly through the products in a way that, that you know, doesn't happen just through your social graph. Okay, so it's trying to create a, a hub, a platform for people that are interested by, 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 by gadget, knowing better, uh, yeah. sharing their experience. 
those kind those kind of concepts yeah i mean i think it's the, the whole concept of um you know people who who uh, who own this stuff are really the best people to be able to 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 kind of tap into, and so we have this amazing community of uh, of gadget owners mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. um, you know you can sort of you know turn to when you have uh, a question or or, or want to get their expertise, and and that was sort of the the big overriding thing for us when we were at Engadget was as much as our team of editors knew, and we had it was a pretty small team when when Ryan and I were there. It's a little bigger now, um, mm -hmm. but as much as we knew. The audience collectively knew just so much more, and there was really no way for us to to completely, um, you know, know everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wanted to build something where the 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 users were empowered to kind of share their expertise and and you know kind of create something that allowed them to kind of empower them to be the experts rather than just you know the editor. So it was sort of me saying, you know, and I'm not down, I'm not up here anymore. I want to be kind of down here and bring the the users up, and we're all yeah. at the same level. Okay, because that's what I've always believed is that you know. It, it should be as democratic as possible and that, you know, just because I'm, you know, the blogger doesn't mean I'm necessarily, you know, more knowledgeable than you are. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, so, so it's trying to gather all the experience and the expertise also coming out from, from the users. If yeah, exactly. Understand your point. And there's, and there's a lot out there. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe so. So in a certain way, it's also a, a, a very interesting platform for uh, companies that are, uh, willing to, to, to survey or to, to look also a little bit at the, the, the kind of uh, topics and also feedbacks that customers are, are giving f for their products. Yeah, and we, you know, we see um, you know, companies going on and sometimes, like for instance, Avner Ronin from Boxy mm -hmm. uh, went on the site a few months ago and just took, started taking questions from users. And, uh, you know, I think a hundred and something questions later. I mean, it took like four days, but um, but you know, he was able to sort of you know interact directly with what are sort of his most knowledgeable and enthusiastic consumers or potential consumers. And I think that um, you know, what we kind of think of ourselves as is a place for uh, you know, that companies can actually engage with their users in a very real way. Um, mm -hmm. not sort of. I I think that blogging is at the end of the day still a very unidirectional you know, medium. And I think that, that what we do is, you know, a little more bi-directional. Right. It's a more, ma it's a many to many rather than a one to many. Yeah. Yeah. I see. I see. So it's very creating a lot of connection between a lot of users, producers. Yeah. And, and, and everyone has a, 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 their own sort of experience. I mean, it's, yeah. it's what you see and engage with on the site is, a, is based, is mediated through your friends and through your gadgets. And so, you know, I, based on like what, who I follow on the site and what gadgets I have that sort of customizes what I see. And, and so uh, again, um, you know, for companies, it's a really easy way for them to be able to track and see, yeah. you know, what those problems are. When someone has a question, you can jump in and, and, um, you know, and, and try to address the issue. And it's a way to sort of, you know, again, to, 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 you know, to me, it's always about like, how are you drawing connections between things? Like how are you creating, I mean, literally a network is connections drawn between things. And mm -hmm. it's like, we're trying to draw connections between users you know, to other users through gadgets. And I think that that, you know, that to me is like an incredibly powerful concept. No, it's, it's, it's great. And uh, I believe also it's a very, very interesting source of inspiration and uh, ideation for, for companies by just following what the customers are telling about, about the product, how they are using it, and perhaps also the kind of, of, uh, other stuff that they, that they are looking for, which are not yet present within within an iPad or, or something like that. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's um, you know, consumers are really savvy now about technology, and right. I think that um, you know, I think there's sort of a cliche of of, of um, you know, people like to talk about well, will my will my mom use it and that sort of thing, and I think there's always going to be that, but I think that. Um, you know, the number of consumers, the percentage of, of consumers who I would consider to be sophisticated or savvy mm -hmm, users mm -hmm. of technology is really, really high and growing, you know, in, it's increasing all the time. And so, um, you know, I wanted to something that sort of acknowledged that, that those people were experts and, and, and also that, you know, to be honest, like if you were a casual user and felt a little bit intimidated by technology, I wanted a place where you could go and ask a dumb question and get a smart answer. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think that that's something that, that has been, you know, has been passing from, um, you know, a lot of these, you know, for again, was something that you couldn't do on Engadget. I mean, you couldn't, Engadget wasn't a good place for, you know, you know, for the app, for someone who wasn't technologically savvy mm -hmm. or sophisticated to, you know, it's not, you're not going to go and read 60 blog posts a day 
um, you know, you, you don't have the time or you, you really don't have the interest. And so mm-hmm. it's about like, can you connect someone with the knowledge they're looking for really quickly, but at the same time, create a community that those savvy, sophisticated users are going to be passionate about. And I think we're doing, you know, we're doing a good job of both so far, which I'm really excited about. 